Um, okay, let's put our data into L1 and L2 for this number four on your assignment. So there's some little components here that I want to remind you guys of, so let's do that. Put that in now. You guys have your A, B, and C done, but D asks you for these summary statistics. And so let's talk about what they are real fast, and then we're going to calculate them. And so what's X bar? The mean of your x and you already calculated that, so that's good. And the, and the y bar is the mean of your y's. What's s of x? Standard deviations of this x list. And what's s of y? Okay, good. And so <clears throat> you want to get this from stat calc to variable stat. Because you want to do this to both variables and you want the statistics on both those variables. So I want them of L1 and L2, which those are the only two things I have in here, so it would have defaulted to that anyway. And look, it gives me all of that good information. It gives me the information for X. So the X bar is 37.4, standard deviation of X is 4.56. And then look down below. It's all the information for Y. Okay, so the Y bar is 630 and standard deviation is 43.59. Okay. And this also gives you minimum and maximum and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> gives you min and max. Remember, you could make a box plot, all that kind of stuff. Okay, but then E asks you to record information for the equation. So that is not shown here. We've got to stat, count, lin L1 or Lynn Riggs, number four, and there you have that. And then you need your diagnostic on. So, okay, so you record all those things. Now, not that you need to do this, but this actually is kind of a neat way shown here to get your calculator to automatically paste the equation into y equals without you having to do it yourself. I mean, you could you go to y equals and go, Okay, put 17x plus 324.3. Sure. Uh -huh. So, yeah, you could. No problem. And so, but if you do this, stat count four of list one and list two, comma, and so I'm going to tell it where to paste. I'm going to paste it in one one, right? Okay. So this tells you the instructions to get the Y to show up. You go to bars, Y bars, function, and Y1. So watch this. Bars button. Over to Y bars. The, the Y values are function values. And there's Y1. Basically, I was just finding the Y1 letter. Boom, there it is. So this is commanding the calculator to compute the linear regression of L1 and L2 and paste it into Y1. And when I hit enter, it is done. You go look at Y equals, ta-da, there is the entire equation in its entirety pasted in there. So if I graph it, it shows up nice and pretty going through all my data. And gee, does the line appear to be a good model? Does the line appear to be a good model? Sure. Okay, value of our slope, and then I want you to say what that is. How many calories would you predict? Okay, and you can do that. So we're not finishing all of these. You're going to fill in the blanks for homework. But And then here we have another one. Calculate the residual for 35 grams of fat. We just did that on um, something a minute ago, right? Oh, the one you had last night. Okay. And then here's our squared, R. Make a residual plot. We've done that already. And based on this, do you think the least squares regression line is a good model? Okay. Here's where we get something different. Now, this is a different problem. So I want you to, for homework, you're going to be finishing four out. Okay. And then you're also going to be, I think we're going to be doing this five, some of it together. <clears throat> because this is, a, this is a component where we do not have all the individual pieces of data. Instead, we have X bar which is the mean age. We have Y bar, which is the average of the heights. We have the standard deviation of X, which is the standard deviation of the age. And we have the standard deviation of the Y. So they give us the general data 
they don't give our statistics they don't give us the individual pieces of data they give us the statistics for those things not the individual pieces of data and it tells us the correlation is 0.86 what's that what letter is that good so our r is 0.86 a find the equation of the least squares regression line that you would use to predict Becky's height from her age, and this is where we have done this before, <clears throat> but you may have forgotten this process, so I want to show that to you. On your formula chart, oops, on your formula chart, there is the formula for slope. Anybody happen to remember that right off? Okay, so let's pull it up here. On your formula chart, on the front here, we have dun, dun, dun. basically the only one you want to deal with on the front on this side is right there that is your slope okay remember that so that means that to find the slope of the equation i take the correlation and it's change of y over change of x just like rise over run so it's standard deviation of y over standard deviation of x just like rise over run okay so let's do that so here we've got that the slope will be r and then the standard deviation in y over the standard deviation of x. And so that slope computes 2.4148. Okay. Now that you have slope, what else do you need for the equation of a line? You need y-intercept. We don't have anything to get at us, but we do have the point x bar, y bar, which is always a point on the line. So we do have a point on the line, and we have the slope. So how can we get the y-intercept from that? Good. Fill it in to our y equals mx plus b. So because this is called the mean, mean point. It is always a point on the line, so I'm going to fill in 2, y equals mx plus b. I'm going to fill in everything except for b, and then solve for it. So the mean of y and the mean of x, I'm going to fill in. Plus b. And then algebra would give you that B's value is 63.75. So the equation is predicted what? It's about height and age, so predicted what? Height equals 63.75 plus 0.4148 times her age. Uh, okay, so then you're going to finish that with that newfound data.